Oh, this is going to be fun. Uh, we're over time, so I'm going to try to make it quick. Um, now, before I start, I want to warn people the portion of the segment has images of violence and nudity, which some may find offensive. So, you guys' favorite president has been sending federal agents uh, into U.S. cities under the guise of protecting uh, federal sites to get around requests from local leaders to sta uh, stand down. So, he's, he's basically saying, you know, he's protecting federal property, but whatever. And for weeks now, those agents have been roaming the streets of Portland, engaging in violence against demonstrators, and uh, in some cases, seizing protesters. And uh, let me just show you the video. What are you doing? Use your words. What are you doing? Use your words. What are you doing? Use your words. What is going on? Who are you? NLG will get you out. What's your name? Tell us your name. Okay, you're fine. We'll get you out. We got you, friend. We got you. You just violated their rights. You just violated their rights. I wanted to show that I was not doing anything provocative or aggressive. I was just standing there with my arms by my sides. That's all I was doing. So yeah, and then uh, it's crazy. So what's going on. Yeah, and just a while, a little while ago, he said he's uh, sending FBI, ATF, DEA, U.S. Marshals into Chicago now. Um, to quote, and Albuquerque. Yeah, and yeah. Albuquerque. To quote, help drive down the violent crime there. Um, now, uh, that's unrelated to the protesters, but in places like Oregon, protesters are not backing down. Uh, we saw the naked Athena and uh, the Navy vet in the video, um, and we also have. The Wall of Mothers. Um, I don't know if you saw these uh, ladies who are protecting the gate. And the husband supporting them. So my question to you guys, given all these images and videos and stories of standoffs and things like that, I mean, iconic images and uh, moments where, like, uh, protesters were beating back. So the question is... Um, uh, will tr will this all backfire on Trump? Um, do you think it'll backfire on Trump, or do you think it will kind of galvanize his whole law and order stance? You know, the stance he took out of the Nixon playbook. Um, so, or do you think it's going to create more violence um, as well? I'll start with uh, Jan. Oh. Uh, I think that the agents he's sending out are a capitulation to the fact that this current solution he's using if I understood it correctly, isn't working the way they wanted it to. So I think the agents he's sending out aren't going to be like these unmarked people that we're seeing. They're going to be, my, my understanding, they seem to be like sound a little bit more advisory, a little less, uh, a little less not undercover, however that works. But I see it not, backfiring is hard with this administration. Has anything illegal that's occurred backfired on him? I think it's more of a, you know, I think galva, galvanize is the right word. We got Galvatron on one side and all the good Autobots on the other side. <laughs> and he's just <laughs> adding more and more people to the, we can't let this happen to, to America. This is not how America's supposed to look. Like, Let's go with East. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, to backfire, that implies that he has a game plan. I, I, I don't think he has a Plan. I think he's playing to the base again. He's using the dog whistle about law and order. He's sending the, the these federal troops to uh, appears only to democratically run cities. Oh, he's related uh, to that. He said that. Yeah. yeah. So it, a particular concern to me is the the I know with Chicago uh, and I think Portland. I'm not sure about Albuquerque. 
but they're, they're not only democratically run, but run by women also. So that's a good point. Uh, yeah, uh, so, and, I, and I didn't pay to, attention to that. Yeah, he had to move on. He, and he tried, he did it in DC too with uh, Mayor Muriel Bowser. Yep. Uh, when he did the photo op in front of the, the church. So, um, I mean, like I said, to, to have a, to backfire means he has a plan. I don't think he has a plan. I don't think he cares. I think he's just kind of throwing stuff against the wall and, and seeing what sticks with his base. Uh, and I think um, covert racism always seems to stick with his brave base. And he's, he's running to that, in a sense, that's his playbook. Is this is going to backfire or is it going to galvanize? Um, I think a little bit of both. Okay. Um, I think if he continues and we start to see more, you know, ugly images, especially of the young lady who's naked and she's being, you know, shot at with a pellet gun and, you know, yes. props to the people who, who stood in front of her to try to protect her because that was just vile and disgusting. The attack mm -hmm. on the Navy guy, Navy veteran, he vile and arm, disgusting. By the way. He was doing nothing. Really. He was standing but this is, you know, a president who claims that he loves the military. Actually, no, you don't really. But, you know, it, it, it harkens back to, you know, Gil Scott Heron saying that the revolution will not be televised. It is being televised. And I think that's going to be the one thing that maybe allows it to backfire for Trump is that as we see more and more of these images and people, you see people who are there peacefully protesting and they're being attacked they're being scooped up, they're being kidnapped, they're being taken to undisclosed locations. I think that is gonna to start to not sit well with a lot of people. And then of course, you're gonna have people who are gonna come out there armed. People at some point, people are gonna stand up and be like, I'm not taking this, especially, and I hate to you know, put Chicago on the map, but uh -huh. that night, Chicago might not be the place for that, bruh. It might I can not see violence be picking up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so I, I, I think we've gotten to a point where um, we are slowly but rapidly at the same time getting into this us against the government mentality um, because he he's not doing anything for the good of the people. He's doing stuff that is um, with the intent of deflecting from all of his issues, deflecting for his shortcomings with the coronavirus situation, deflecting from the fact that he's down in the polls. So he wants to appeal to his constituents like, hey, these people are violent, so I have to do something. This is how I'm going to protect you. When in reality, it's not protecting anyone. Right. Mm -hmm. oh, my quick thoughts are, you know, I, I think that I think we're looking at, if we're talking, like we were talking earlier, we're looking at the Fox News type people who are authoritarian and they're looking at this and they're like, oh, this is great. You know, we're seeing people get beat down. We're getting, this is sort of what they are like, okay, this is great. I mean, if you think back to the slavery era when people were lynching and they were all standing around watching people get lynched, I mean, there were crowds of people standing around watching people get killed, hung by their necks like they were watching an uh, animal being, so, and there were crowds of them. So this is very similar to that. So those people, and there again, when we're thinking about that Fox News group of people, those extreme conservatives, the far right, those type of people, they, they, this is what they want, authoritarian type rule. So this, they're, they're good. So his base loves this. But there are people in the middle who did vote for Trump, I think, who are, ultimately going to turn i hope this is a hope um where you know because most people want to do right by others and want to do good and want to be good and when you see these images and lizzie you made the good point about you know it's being put on film now we're seeing it in the nixon era and the reagan era we didn't see that you know they were all law and order but we didn't see all the bad stuff that comes with law and order now we're seeing it and now we can look at it and, and from people are seeing this you know, I think people's genuine goodness will come out, and I hope that it will come out by the polls. But don't sleep. Don't sleep on Fox. I don't know if you guys remember, I don't know if it was two or three or four weeks ago, which lie it was. But do you remember when they doctored the Seattle, um, the mm -hmm. Seattle camp? 
that they had made and yep. they were throwing the picture and they yep. had the same guy holding a, a, a mm-hmm. uh, assault rifle and all the yep. pictures. That's what Fox yep. does. That's they how do. they play that. That's how they play that. They, they do the dog whistle. That's how they play that game with people. So, well, even, even on um, our, our Facebook page for the couple that was in St. Louis who pulled the gun out on the protest, the guns out on the protesters, someone posted an image of them with the guns out on the protesters, right, but with right. one of the protesters with the AK-47. And I jumped in there like, that is doctored, that is fake news. None of the protesters had guns. So mm-hmm. stop it. Yeah, stop right. it. So Neil, was that a truth liar shenanigan? Oh, thanks for <laughs> You know what, I might have to get you to start asking, but those were lots of lies and lots of shenanigans. Um, all right, I'm gonna go really, really quick through some of these comments. So Mike Winner did, did fact check me, I mean, uh, correct me, make a correction, which was great. Uh, lynchings were not the slavery era, which he's right. It was far after the slavery era. Um, well, they were lynching then too. Weren't they lynching not back just, in the slavery era? Right. They were still uh, I thought they were lynching the slavery yeah, too. Yeah. But they were more examples. Yeah. Than... Yeah. yeah. Um, Kevin Thaxley says, this is how fascism starts. Um, Vaughn Perry said, cough white Americans. Um, all 